portion is the trouble of one day, Lord. So we don't need to worry about how we're going to eat and where we're going to live and what we're going to do because you know the plans that you have for us to prosper us and not to harm us. So we thank you, God, that there is grace and there is mercy in you and that we have everything we need. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Just say this with me. There is grace. There is mercy in your presence. In your presence, there is hope everlasting in your presence in your presence again there is there is grace sing to your soul there is mercy in your presence in your presence there is hope everlasting everlasting in your presence, in your presence, all power, all power, all glory unto your name, my Savior. All glory, all glory, all glory. To your name. Unto your name. Unto. Unto your name. Unto. Unto your name. Hallelujah. Unto. There is grace. There is grace. There is mercy in your presence. In your presence, there is hope everlasting. Everlasting in your presence. In your presence, all power, all power. Do you believe it? All glory unto your name, my Savior. All glory, all glory again. All glory. Unto your name. And just bless it with a kiss. Unto, unto your name. Oh God, I thank you. No matter what I'm going through, it's unto. Unto your name. Yes, I bless you, God. This morning with the kiss of my praise with the kiss of my praise with praise on my lips I enter into this place into your gates with thanksgiving and according to your word Lord I praise you with the psaltery and harp with the timbrel and dance with the string in instruments and the cymbals and the loud sounding cymbals let everything that hath breath praise the Lord praise ye the Lord praise ye the Lord Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, we praise you, Lord, we praise you, Lord, and we cry, holy, we cry, holy, we cry.
Just try me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And he won't fail. He won't fail, 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 he won't fail. I will heal your body. I will heal. your mind and your will, your emotions and your thoughts, I will heal it all, I will heal it all, so your soul can make its boast in me, I'll heal you, I'll heal so you can be free and delivered so you can be free be delivered I'm already here I'm already Just ask and I will provide, I will provide. For those of you that have been faithful to God, and you know you have, God, I've done what you said. Lord, I've heard your word. I've read your word. I believe your word. I trust in you. Even when my flesh would buck against it, I put my flesh under subjection. And I say, my house will be a house of prayer. This temple you built will glorify you. I resist the enemy, and he will flee from me. I walk in love. In kindness I am joyful I have peace I have all of the fruit of the Spirit operating in me and whatever I need I can come to the throne of grace and cry boldly Abba Father Daddy God and you will provide every single need God is saying he hears you 
and he sees you and your good works do not go unnoticed he reigns on the just and the unjust and though sometimes it seems like the unjust prosper wait a little while wait a little while not for their demise but for your reward for the victory you have in me when you speak my name when you carry my name when you operate in my will when my presence abides with you when you share my word when you witness to others when you pray for those that despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you when you are the man that I called you to be when you are the woman that I designed you to be when you do not provoke your children to wrath but you pray for them and you lead them with fear and admonition towards the Lord, towards me. I see you like Samuel. It comes up before me. Your arms will come. They will come. Your prayers will come to me. So you can ask me for what you need. You can ask me for what you even have a desire for. Because according to my word, if you seek me first and my kingdom, and it's righteousness, all of these things will be added unto you. So don't delay in asking me for what you need. I will, I will provide, I will provide. Even though it looks like failure, Even though it looks like loss, I will provide. I will provide. Thank you, Lord. And I give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, according to your word according to your will we have everything we have need of and we give you glory God in Jesus name hallelujah continue to worship as you receive your pastor hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus we worship you Lord and we give you Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus. The Holy Spirit was speaking to someone. She said, even though it looks like failure, it looks like, what was that last sentence about? Even though it looks like failure. Loss. Even though it looks like loss. Uh huh. What was the rest of it? Come on now. Yes. I will. Even though it looks like loss. I will provide. God is speaking to some of y'all. I am with you. Yes. It looks like loss. Yes. Yes, God. That's the key phrase. It looks like. Yes. Keep your eyes on me. He will provide. look like to some of y'all you're taking a step back but you're really taking a step forward the key phrase she said it looks like because you're in the middle of the process like failure, but you're just regrouping right now. You're regrouping. You said, but pastor, the money is tighter than it used to be, but you're regrouping. God got to teach you some stewardship right now, but but you're not going backwards. If he lets you go any further, in that state of mind, you would destroy your own blessings. 
so it's not failure. There's someone here, you, you, you've been beating yourself up. You thought you should be. I need you to stand real quick. Be honest. I'm not as far along. Honey, come here right quick. I'm not as far along as I thought I would be. Get your microphone, baby. See, you're judging by your timing, but your timing is not God's. timing is not God's timing. God sees the past, present, and the future all at one time. You just see the now. Trust me, after 32 years of serving God, I can tell you, your time and God's time is not the same. It's not. I venture to say you're right where he needs you to be. Honey, I want you to pray for pray for those that they feel like they're not where they should be. Feel like they're behind in some way, but they're right smack dab where God will have them to be. He got you on the potter's wheel. He's pulling some things out, pushing some things in. So sometimes he had to get you to be still for a minute. <laughs> he said, but fast, I, I ain't working like I used to. I ain't making the money I used to. He got you on the potter's wheel. Got to renew your thinking. Got to renew some things. Some of y'all been moving ahead of God all your life. Now you're going to learn to walk in concert with him. First thing come to your mind, you jump up and you never consulted him about it. Now you're going to start consulting God first. He deliberately slowed you down to speed you up. Go ahead and pray, baby. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Mm -hmm. And Father God, you see your sons and your daughters that are standing this morning, Father. Mm -hmm. And Father God, I thank you that they have not missed the mark, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. Father God, I thank you that they are right where you would have them to be yes, during this Lord season Jesus. in their lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. And Father God, I thank you that you would continue to give them grace, Father. Yes, to Lord. stand, Father God, and haven't done all to stand, Father, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over their minds, Father, oh, over yes. their thoughts, Father. When the enemy would tell them, Father God, that they have lost, Father, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. And Father God, the devil is a liar, Father, in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And I thank you this morning, Father God, that you will show <laughs> yourself strong in their lives, Father. Yes. When the timing is right, Father, in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. And as Pastor told us, Father God, their time is not your timing, Father. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank and I thank you, Father God, that they won't quit, Father. Mm -hmm. But they'll continue to walk by faith and not by sight, Father. They will trust you, Father. Trust when all looks hopeless, when all looks bleak, Father, they will continue to trust you, Father God. And give it to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank and you. I thank you, Father God, that victory will thank come, you, Father. Thank you, thank you. Because if we stay with you, Father God, we always win, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
The only way that we fail is if we quit, Father. And I decree and I declare by faith that they will not quit, Father. They will but not they'll quit. continue to stand on your word, Father God, on your promises, Father. Yes, Lord. And in your grace, Father God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And Father God, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Do only as you can do in their lives, Father. Thank you, God. You know what doors need to be opened Thank for you. your people, Father. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And I decree and I declare by faith, Father God, that you will give them double for their trouble, double. Father God, in the name of Jesus. You will restore to them, Father God, all that's been taken by the caterpillar, Father God, the canker worm, the pommel worm, Father. You will give them double, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we bless you this morning for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. While you're standing, uh, elders, come in right quick. Come in right quick. Come in right quick. Oh, now I need you to pray over her. I got two words, and then you can pray. There is something called supernatural acceleration supernatural that's what God is doing you in your life now and it's I'm trying to say it nice you're still trying to adapt <laughs> but God is getting ready thank you Val God is getting ready to blow your mind Everything that Val sang prophetically, she talked about faithfulness and she talked about the parenting piece. She talked about all of that. But, and God already started the process, but it's not traditional. It's not where you can control it. You can't figure it. You can't. He touching folk that you don't even understand why they call and why they. Why are they trying to bless me? Why are they trying to help me? And sometimes you just have to say, Lord, I thank you, Amen. without an explanation. Mm. And so, Father, we just thank you. Supernatural acceleration. Mm -hmm. Supernatural strength in the midst, God. And, Lord, you're pushing her forward, specifically materially and financially. Thank you that you're giving her double for her shame. Yes, thank you, for everything that was lost, thank you for yes. restoration in the name of Jesus. Restore everything that the canker worm and the caterpillar had eaten yes, in her life. And the locusts, God. Yes, thank you for the 100 fold, yes, the maximum yield yes, of the seeds yes. she has sown, the seeds of love seeds of covering folks children mentoring pouring into them behind the scenes helping healing the ladies who have been raped abused thank you for her reaping it's her reaping time sacrificial giving thank you for supernatural acceleration in the name of Jesus God says stop trying to figure it out figuring out or wear you out. You ain't going to be able to figure this one out. He's going to touch black folks, white folks, enemies, friends to pour into your life. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Just say, Lord, don't try to explain it. Don't try to justify. It. Well, it don't really mean. I just say, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement. Yes, Lord. We're praying that they won't die in rebellion. Matter of fact, I'm going to pray that none of your children will die in rebellion. Some of y'all said, Lord, they're so rebellious, but they, that they won't die in rebellion. God, thank you that they'll repent in this lifetime. 
Well, we have a chance to see. Yeah, you're not going to die in rebellion. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. While you go ahead and keep standing, we're going to go ahead and greet one another like this because I'll tell you, Val, did you have anything else? Because I, okay, all right, uh, let's go ahead and greet one another, give them a fist pound, and tell them, so thank you for supernatural acceleration. Thank you for supernatural uh, acceleration. Get ready to ex acceleration, acceleration in the pals, acceleration, look like I'm behind but I'm getting ready to accelerate. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Doc, <laughs> how you doing, young man? I figured you were going to show up today. I had you See, on my mind today. You got my text. Who this pretty girl right here? Because God allows things that may not be good to <laughs> us. does not oh, mean that it's not good for us. You. I take that as my, that's my happy See, father day love. Okay, a child right, never right. learns how to fly. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. I can feel that it won't be long. <laughs> I started to give you the microphone. I ain't gonna put you on the spot though. I ain't gonna put you on the spot in front of your friend. I was gonna put you hear that microphone. Amen. Amen. You are Baby, I was looking in that pocketbook. Is he in the pocketbook? Amen. I don't want no fist pump. You're my relative. I don't want no fist pump. Looking like half the shit. <laughs> My man, right? Hey, Doc, they put it on yesterday, didn't they? Oh, oh, oh man. Uh -huh. oh. oh, man. Oh, man. I try to do it every 90 days, but after COVID, we have to stop. Hey, man. Oh yeah. yeah, I understand. So, I'll let you know about the next one. When I look over my okay. shoulder, I remember. Amen. Amen. Honey, had a plan before time began. Do you do the greeting, homie? Do the greeting. Yeah, do the greeting. <laughs> She look a lot better than me. I like her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Frankie in the house. Everything is all right with the world because Frankie is in the house. Good to see Brother Frankie this morning. Hallelujah. Good he's, morning, he's everybody. He's our top security man. That's see, right. Brother Lord sitting down because you here. <laughs> so, anything mess up, Frankie still got that fist for us. That's right. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Don't mess up now. Amen. Go ahead, baby. Good morning, everybody, and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Good morning. In the house and those um, that have joined us by the different social media platforms. Pastor and I, we welcome you. We welcome our visitors this morning. Mm -hmm. It's good to see um, my brown. Mm -hmm. And I think her granddaughter. She Thank got, she, yeah, she, she don't want the microphone. I'm trying to <laughs> I ain't messing with her Aww. today. I just get one song. I just want one song. That's right. Mm -hmm. We're going to get that Yamaha so when you walk in, see, I'm just going to throw you on the Yamaha. Oh, yeah, my. Yeah, you ain't forgot. Amen. 
Pastor and I, we welcome you again to Spirit of Truth Christian Center. And happy Father's Day again. And to the father of this house. Amen. The father of my son. Amen. Happy Amen. Father's Day. Thank you. Don't start nothing. It sounds kind of sweet now. I'm, sorry. I'm trying to focus, Thea. Talk to herself. Trying to focus. What am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing, Rick? You give me signals. I don't know what you're saying. I'm on probation. Okay. No, they put me in Facebook jail. I won't for that. No, I won't for that. It's some all kidnapping. They, anyway, y'all doing good? Amen. 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 I got a short word today. Is that good? So y'all going to the mall or something today? Uh, buy some presents. Okay. Amen. Um, God is good. How about we do the announcements in the end? If I forget, Sister Angela Mallory, remind me. Praise God. Uh, I believe I got the right crowd for what I got to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about some stuff that Valerie was singing about. Uh, Rick, go ahead. Uh, you do that every time, by the way. Uh, did you do that? Oh, okay. All right. What is, is that the, Rick, what is that? Is that the lion? Come on, you you thought of that? <laughs> Man, that's awesome. That, that go with my message there. All right, praise God. Y'all got to stand up one more time. I got to do my confession. Then we're gonna get in, get in the word. All right. Hey Amen. There's some talented folks around here. Is that the Lion of Judah? Okay. All right. How many know the word of God should be where? Two places. Be sure in your, and coming out of your. Can you wait for others to speak the word over your life? And why is that? So everybody speaking blessings? No. Not necessarily. <laughs> she said, no, not necessarily. She'd be hurting them on her Facebook page. If you're an enemy or a hater, don't go on her Facebook page. Because gonna, you're going to get converted. <laughs> Amen. Come on, sound off with me like we in the military and say, I'm the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. In Jesus Christ. I walk in divine health. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I walk in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on him. I have been delivered from the power of Satan, and I have authority over him. In the name of Jesus, I have wisdom and revelation knowledge of the word of God. I have the mind of Christ, and I operate in it daily. I am a bold witness for Jesus Christ, and I am blessed in everything that I do. I'm looking to bless others everywhere I go. I have favor with God, and he gives me favor with all people. We are ministers of the gospel. Of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, I can do all things, do all things. Through, Christ, through Christ, which strengthens me. Strengthens I'm, strong me. I'm strong in the Lord. I do mighty exploits, do mighty exploits. In, his in His name. I am patient. I, am patient. I, walk, in I walk in kindness. I live in holiness. I live in holiness. And I walk in purity. I, walk in purity. I, love, all I love all people, even difficult people. Even difficult With, people. The With the love of the Lord, I prosper. In every area, in every area of, my life, of my life, spiritually, spiritually physically, physically, mentally, mentally socially, socially, and financially. And financially. In, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give the Lord a shout up in the house. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Got to get y'all to love me early before I start teaching today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I just got a simple reminder today. It's not deep. It's not, it might not be revelation for some of y'all. How many know sometimes we just have to be reminded of who we are in Christ Jesus? Is that right? That's all I got for you today. Go to 1 Peter 2, verses 9 through 10. I'm reading the Amplified. Bro, Lord, you're going to love me today because this, this might be 40 minutes, bro, Lord. It might be. You're going lo to love me today. <laughs> uh, 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. 
in the Amplified. It reads on this wise. They're going to put it on the screen. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation. King James says a holy nation. And a special people. I need you to remember that. A special people for God's own possession. So that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds, and virtues, and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10. Once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people. Amen. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. <clears throat> I want to teach very briefly on the subject. Kings and queens, that's who you are. Yeah. I should have said royalty is who you are, but kings and queens, yeah. that's who you are. Yeah. Uh, uh, last year, during the month of, actually it was 2020, during the month of January, the Lord woke me up about 3.30 one morning, and he said, to, he said this to me. He said, son, tell my people that they are kings and queens. That's who they are. Amen. I want to talk with the ladies first, since this would have been Relationship Sunday, so let me talk with the ladies first, even though it's Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, but we're going to honor y'all at the end. Most of you ladies in here today, you dress very nice starting with Dr. Cynthia before I get in trouble. <laughs> Dress very nice. I mean, your outfit is lit. They are, they are going to have to help me with the hip words. That's about as hip as I got. Your outfit is lit. <laughs> you slaying today. Is that, is that hip enough? Is that, is that, okay, help me. Kyra said, okay, I'm in there. You slaying. You, you smelling good. You got your best perfume. And your perfume, you got the Estee Lauder. You got the Coco Chanel, I can smell it, the aromatics, uh, Carolina Herrera. Have I hit y'all perfume yet? Uh, the Macy's, the one from Macy's, the one from Neiman Marcus. And it's okay. I, I, I ain't mad about that. Some, some of you ladies got your nails manicured. You got your nails, hold your hand up like that. My nails manicured and you got your hair permed or braided. Or we or got your soul in going strong. That's all right. Got your soul in. Looking better than Beyonce knows with your soul wins. And that's fine and good. Got no problem with that. But my question is to you, do you know who you are on the inside? Uh, do you know your worth in the kingdom? And do you know your value to Almighty God? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you know your value? Uh, yeah, that's the question. Uh, because as far as God is concerned, your self-worth is not determined by your net worth. So uh-oh. Yeah, it's not determined by that. No, it's not, it's not determined by that kind of thing. Your worth in the kingdom. Do you know your value? Amen. Let me talk to the brothers for a minute. Brothers, some of y'all are cool. You're smooth and handsome today. Yeah, <laughs> he said, thank you. <laughs> There's always one that come back and said, thank you, Minister Jones. The, the, the ones that had to, <laughs> thank you. He would be the one. You're smooth, the haircut is tight, the beard is tight. You got the top of the line cologne, Armani, Christian Dior, Versace. Oh, somebody said, Old Spice, help them, Jesus. Who said that? Rick, help them, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you got to come up, baby. <laughs> Some of you brothers got a good job, a nice car, BMW, the Tesla, or oh, tes Tesla, I'm sorry. You got the uh, what was the 7 Series, got the 
Yukon, Escalade, the Audi. But my question is, you messing up my lesson. <laughs> my question is, do you know who you are on the inside? Do you know your value beyond what you possess? Uh, I had a, a friend in high school. You would know him if I called his name. We used to go to the club together. Some of y'all don't know nothing about the nightclub. <laughs> and uh, y'all been saved all your life. But yeah. we'd go to the nightclub. And one time we went to the nightclub in Rocky Mount. And it was a lot of girls at the bar. And I was at the bar. We were having a good time. And I looked for my friend. I said, what? where in the world he go? Then I went outside. He was sitting down. I said, man, what's wrong with you? He said, man, I... If, if I ain't driving my car, I can't talk to no girls. <laughs> I said, well, you equate your worth with your car? Mm -hmm. So if your car ain't outside, you can't talk to people. How I many you know that's a bad way to be? Yeah. You, that's the, uh, listen, do you know your worth outside of how much money you make? I do. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I told you earlier, let me say it again, your self-worth is not determined by your net worth. Yes, sir. Because listen, even if you have no stocks, no bonds, no real estate, or cryptocurrency, I'm still valuable to God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not promoting poverty, but I'm still valuable to God. Because my self-worth is determined by my intimate relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. You can always tell if you don't have an intimate relationship because you find your worth in things. Mm -hmm. Money is a good tool, but it's a poor master. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. Come on, say, I'm somebody in Jesus. Somebody. Yeah. Now, so my goal today is to build you up, to encourage you, and show you who you are according to the word, not stuff on the outside. Because once you get a revelation of who you really are, everything in you and everything around you is going to change. Amen. It has to change. But you got to know who you are on the inside. Amen. Come on, say, I want to know who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, according to the Bible. So let me say it that way. I want to know who I am according to the Bible. Now, first of all, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 it tells us that you were created in the image and the likeness of God. Is that right? Yeah. And listen, and really and truly, if you could see the real me on the inside, you would notice that I look just like my daddy. Yeah, yeah, my heavenly father, my Abba father. You would notice I look just like him if you could see me on the inside. Mm-hmm. You see, you are a spirit. Mm -hmm. You have a soul and you live in a physical body. Isn't that right? Called the 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Your spirit man looks like God and it embodies his very essence. If you could cut me open and look on the inside, you would see his very essence is in me. Listen, your spirit man longs for the word. That's what got some of y'all here today. You didn't feel like it in the flesh, but your spirit man longs for the word. Amen. And your spirit man longs for prayer time and worship time. Your spirit man loves meditating on the word of God. Your spirit man loves walking in honor. Your yeah. spirit man loves walking in truth and integrity and holiness. Your spirit man loves to do what's right, not that shady stuff. Spirit man ain't the problem, though. Come on now. Listen, your soul houses your mind, your will, your intellect, your imagination, and your emotions. Yeah. And sometimes the thoughts and the feelings that come from your soul are good, and sometimes they are bad. It, it all depends on who you are feeding the most. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. It, it, you, it, who you feeding the most? That's why the Bible said in Proverbs 4 and 23, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Hebrew, that, that word means your mind or your will or your emotions. You got to guard them. 
you got to guard your soulish man and what you let go into it. And finally, your body is the house that your spirit man and your soul lives in. God is three parts, but yet one. Man is three parts, but yet one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a physical body. Now, there's another similarity that we have with God. Just like God has dominion in the heavens, he created man to have dominion in the earth realm. I got to teach for a minute. Genesis 1, 26. If you don't believe me, go study that. So listen, from the very beginning, God created us to reign and to rule. That's what Paul said in Romans 5 and 17. He said we reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're supposed to be reigning. We've got to renew our thinking. We're supposed to be reigning in this life. The word reign means, it's the, it's the word basileo, and it means to reign as a king, to rule, and to exercise dominion. Amen. To exercise dominion. Listen, over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Listen, God did not put us here to allow Satan and his demons to rule over us. No, 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 no. That's backwards. He didn't put them here to rule over us. Honey, you ready? You got your microphone? Read uh, Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power uh -huh. to tread on serpents and scorpions uh -huh. and over all the power of the enemy. Uh -huh. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So, the <laughs> no, hold, did you say the devil will chase me and beat me up? You said, what did you say? Nothing by what? But Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay. So this word power in the text is the Greek word exousia. It means authority. Somebody say authority. authority. So listen, I suppose to have authority over demonic spirits. Is that right? I, I have authority. Listen, I have authority over addiction spirits. Uh, listen, I don't have to remain a crack addict. Uh, I don't have to remain an alcoholic. Yeah, you might have a struggle right now, but I don't have to remain addicted to the vaping and the tobacco and the marijuana. I don't have to. Amen. Don't be ashamed of it if you're in a struggle, but you got to get the revelation that I don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to. Listen, I have authority over perversion spirits. I, I don't have to stay bound to pornography. I don't have to stay bound in fornication. I don't have to stay bound in perverse sexual perversion. I, I don't have to. You might be in it, and I'm not putting you down, but you don't have to stay. Amen. Why? Because help is available. Hallelujah. Thank God all of us will be up the creek Amen. with no paddle if help won't. Listen, I have authority over poverty spirits listen I don't have to stay poor like my generation before me yeah yeah it was ingrained in their mind but it don't have to be ingrained in my mind yeah yeah listen for those of you taking notes this is not in my notes God will allow what you will allow in matters where he's giving you authority Man, I could drop the thing right here, Miss Dot. God will allow what you will allow in matters where he has given you authority. So you're sitting there crying, Lord, I, I wish the devil would get out of my house. You run him out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wish the devil would stop messing with my... No, you run him out. You break out your anointing oil. You plead the blood of Jesus. You say you got to go in the name of Jesus. But when you say the name of Jesus, make sure you know him. Because the devil know if you don't know him. And he don't respect you if you don't know him. Ask the sons of Skeezer in the book of Acts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, since I have discovered my authority in Christ, I choose to reign over demons. 
I choose. Thank you. I, I choose to do it. Now, you can do whatever you want and keep believing that old tradition of God, but I choose. Amen. Yeah, Jesus already told me he gave me authority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I choose to reign over demons, addiction spirits, perversion spirit, yeah. lust, poverty, greed yeah. spirit, suicide. I, I choose. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to take some time mm -hmm. and get in this right here. Yes, some of y'all during the week, this don't open. Yeah. You can't walk in authority if you don't know your authority. And you can't know your authority without this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You praying them old prayers that don't even match the word. I'm praying for Jesus' sake. Lord, for Jesus' sake, let him... No, that's not, not in matters where he's giving you authority. <laughs> Come on, say, I have authority over demons. Mm. Secondly, God did not put us here to allow sin to have dominion over us. If you're in a sin right now, don't be condemned by it. I ain't saying that. I'm just saying you got to know this. Yeah. The honey, read Romans 6, 12 through 14. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, mm -hmm. that you should obey in the lust thereof. Mm -hmm. Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto don't, sin. So don't yield your members. You, you, you yielding your member. He said don't yield your members of your body as instruments unto sin. What does it say after that? But yield yourselves unto God uh -huh. as those that are alive from the dead uh -huh. and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Mm, mm, For mm. sin should not have dominion over you. Stop right there. Stop. You said it so nice. Say it again, baby. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Uh -huh. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. We have the word of God. That's right. We have the Spirit of God on the inside. Is that right? We have the grace of God or His divine enablement to help us in things where we're weak. Amen. We have angels or ministering spirits that can assist us in our everyday walk. Amen. And we have authority. Is that right? That's right? Therefore, saints, God has already given us, I think Val was singing, everything we need. To walk in dominion over sin. He, he, he gave us everything. So, so listen. So if we get back entangled. Mm -hmm. In such a way. Mm -hmm. That sin is dominating us. Yes. It's because we are not using the help. That Jesus has provided. It, it, the onus is not on Jesus no more. He's given us the help. He's given us the help. Uh, it, it's simple that we got to know our help. We can't keep blaming God for how we living. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Listen, he gave us help when it comes to resisting temptation. He said resist the devil and he'll flee from. He gave us help to keep our tongue from getting away from us. Yeah. I mean, oh, sometimes that tongue be trying to get away from you. When somebody do you wrong, when that relative keep doing the same thing over the, that tongue try to get away, but he giving us some help. I don't have to keep flying off the handle. I don't have to keep going to my old book of cuss words and bringing them back up. Uh, that book of cuss word ain't just one. It's that blankety blank blank. Let me get you told blankety blank 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 Negro. Uh, he gave us help. When we need to flee from fornication. The Bible, the Bible does say, uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. When it comes to fornication, he said, flee. He said, run. Get to roller skate. Get to running. He didn't say pray in tongue. He didn't say start worshiping. He said, run. A good run is better than a bad stand any day. Y'all make it too deep. You start running. Come on, I'm going over. I'm just going over for Bible study, 11 o'clock at night. Run! <sighs> See, I'm going to stay there. If I don't get no amen, I'm going to stay right there. 
I'm going to stay right there. Somebody better say amen, Pastor. Amen. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she said keep it going. Come on, Bible study at 1130. We're going to be looking at Maverick City, Pastor, at 1130. Run! In the name of Jesus. <laughs> All right, Maverick City. <laughs> You be Maverick City and all right. Uh, <laughs> don't start that, man. Don't start that. <laughs> Let him teach the lesson. He done messed my whole. Where was I at, by the way? Talking about we just snuggling. Okay, snuggling. Uh, listen, I'm so grateful today that he didn't leave us to deal with all this stuff, man, on our own. He, Angela, give me some air. I'm getting ready to hit that. Crescendo in a minute. I feel it. Uh, he, he, he didn't leave us to do all this stuff on our own. But he gave us the grace of God, the divine enablement of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit don't just make me dance and make me speak in tongues, but he, but he give me power in my zero hour. When I'm about to give in to the sin, when I'm about to open my legs up, sister, when I'm about to drop my underwear, bro. He give me power in my zero hour when I'm about to mess up. Y'all better stop being religious, though. I'm going to go deeper. When I want to cuss my supervisor out at the McDonald's stair, but he give you power. Come on, girl. In my zero hour. He's a racist. And he talked about me. He called me the N-word, but God gave me power. In my zero hour. Yes, yes. yes, sir. When the son and daughter that I raised started cussing at me in my house and I wanted to run over with the car, God gave me power. In my zero hour. Uh, uh, uh. They hit the 911. <laughs> Just hit the 911, baby. Come on, say God gave us help. <laughs> now, let's talk about some other ways God made us unique, all right? Psalms 139, verse 14 in the King James. Y'all know it. Did I give you that, babe? I did. I didn't give you that one. Go read it for me then, sweetheart. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. Okay, I want to read the King James first and then that because I want you to see how much, how much more insight it gives. The King James says, David said, I will praise thee for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. My wife read the New Living Translation. Listen, it said, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Hear that word complex. He said, your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. L listen to me, ladies. Talk to the ladies first again. Uh, a lot of times, worldly-minded brothers will label you as being too complex. And they use this phrase in a negative connotation to mean that you're too complicated and you're hard to figure out. How many of y'all ever been called... <laughs> How many of y'all ever call, been called complex? complex. Yeah, she be, so how many of y'all ever been called too, she too complex? Mm -hmm. and, and what the man is, he's really saying, he really saying that because when he rolled up in his Bentley, it didn't impress you. When he put his best Mac on you or his rap, I don't know the newest term, Thayer, you're going to have to help me. What's the newest terminology? But he put his best rap line on you. And you didn't take the bait. He took you out to eat. To the roof, Chris. Not Red Lobster. We're going another. The roof, Chris. Where the meal is $230 for both of y'all to eat. But even though he took you out to eat, you didn't let him get to first base. Is that nice? Did I say that nice? First base? Is that nice? Okay. You didn't let him get to first base. Somebody said, what's first base? You didn't let him get to the cookie jar. Angela said, okay. Don't stop me, Angela. I'm on a roll, baby. <laughs> and, 
And so because he didn't get what he wanted, he labeled you as too complex. <laughs> but ladies, you need to tell him, you can call me complex, you can call me complicated, you can say I'm hard to figure out, but the truth is, I know my value. Oh God, help me, Jesus. I, I know my value, and my body is worth more than a bucket of chicken at the KFC. So what? You gave me a chicken leg, but my body is worth more than what the colonel can provide. My body is worth more than an old 1970s rap line that you put on me. My body is worth more than a fancy automobile. Now it's worth more than that. Because why? Because my body is the temple where the Holy Ghost lives and everywhere I go, I take the Holy Ghost with me. If I go to the Motel 6, I take him with me. When I go to the church, I take the Holy Ghost with me. Because the word said, I've been bought with a price and the price is the blood of Jesus. So I belong to him. And since my mind has been renewed, I now recognize that I'm royalty. Uh huh. Therefore, I don't just give it up to any and everybody. Uh 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 uh. I'm not a whoremonger. I'm not loose. I'm not the freak of the week. I'm not a trickster that turn according to your forty dollars. They got a thing out now about the forty dollars, but I ain't gonna talk about that. No, I'm not all that. Why? Because you got to put a ring on this. It might sound old, might sound traditional, but biblically speaking, you got to put a ring yeah. on this right here. Come on, say, I know my worth. I know my worth. Now, let me, let me speak to the brothers. Speak up, I'm going to speak up for the brothers. Thank you so much. For the few that's in here, let me speak up for the brothers. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, brothers, y'all better give me some loud amen too, bro. Because the women were into it a while ago. <coughs> Let me speak up for the brothers. There are some sisters, brother, who don't recognize a brother's worth. Help me, Lord Jesus. There are some sisters who will intentionally <coughs> put their breasts on your face real hard when they hug you. They don't hug you, they hug you like this. <coughs> and then they get mad when you don't react because they think they're irresistible. Help me, Lord. There are some sisters who winked at you, brothers, in the teller line at the bank. But they got mad because you gave more focus to your bank book. And didn't focus on them at all. <laughs> Man, I think I told y'all two years ago I was at the credit union. Something about the credit union. You need to pray for the credit union folks. <laughs> she worked at the credit union. I was at the credit union, bro. brother Vince. I was sharp. I was dressed up that day because I had Bible study. We were having physical Bible study. And I had that, that nice cologne on. And I walked up to the teller line. And so the lady said, my God, you looking good and you smell good. She said, where are you on your way to? I said, I'm going to Bible study. So she switched, said, praise the Lord then. I think I need to go to Bible study. <laughs> she won't think about no Bible study at first. Talking about my cologne. <laughs> Something about that credit union, girl. You need to watch them folks at the credit union. <laughs> but all seriousness, uh, uh, brothers, she complimented your suit, your smell, and your physique. And all you did was say, good morning, and kept it moving. And so she called you complex. She said, I can't figure him out. He didn't take the bait. It must be something wrong with him. That's what she said under her breath. Must be something wrong. He must be a punk or something. He, mm -hmm. uh, if he don't want this, he's a I'm trying to be nice. 
But listen, but listen, but listen, but listen to me, listen to me for a moment. I'm trying to be nice. But listen to me. A God-fearing man is a little complex. Help me, Lord. He's a little harder to figure out than your average guy. <laughs> because you see, a godly man is not easily persuaded by forbidden fruit. Help me, Lord Jesus. He knows that certain fruit is off limits. As a pastor, I got the most beautiful women in, in on the planet in my church. And, and, but I know that my spiritual daughters are off limits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something is just off limits. It's not that he's a pump. He's just something off limits. Got some boundaries. Come on. Because, listen, another thing, because he realizes his very life is on the line if he yields to sex sin. The Bible said over in uh, uh, Numbers that 23,000 folks died because of sexual immorality. They died at one time. And Paul quotes that in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8. He refers back to it. Listen, in Proverbs 6 and 26 says, for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for his precious life. Listen, you see, listen, 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 listen to me saying. The devil, the devil is not just using her to get you in the bed. No, no, no. He using her to take your very life away. He, call, he wants you to lose your family. He wants you to lose your influence. He wants you to lose uh, everything you got. For one moment of indiscretion. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, Satan is after your life. The Bible says he come to do what? Steal. Uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. Now, secondly, brothers, if a woman calls you complex, that means... You don't just believe any and everything they say to you. That it, complex means you're not naive anymore. Because there was a time, brothers, where if anything, little thing they say, we believe it and we hook. You know, we hook. You know, they got us hooked. But I've learned some things along the way, and I'm not so naive anymore. And you're you're uh, you're not blown away. Every time you get a compliment no more. How many know it can be something behind a compliment sometimes? I'm not saying there's something wrong with it, but it's sometimes there's some flattery behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A godly man knows that if you're easy to give it up with him, then you probably that way with all the brothers. Uh-huh. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm on the live stream. Let me talk to the live stream, folks. A godly man, he knows that you might just be a gold digger who cares nothing about my well-being. Mm-hmm. When the job dry up, you gone. I want to applaud Sister Angela back there with Frankie. When Frankie had a stroke, she stayed. When he got sick, she stayed. When he went in a wheelchair, she stayed. Even though she's a young, vibrant woman, she could have just cut him loose. But she said, no, I'm going to honor my vows. You don't hear that kind of stuff no more. You don't hear that. Yeah. Most of all, a godly man knows his worth. He knows his value. He knows he's royalty. He knows he wants him a lady. Like Ruth. And we always talk about Boaz. But a godly man want him a Ruth. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Ruth did not chase after Boaz. But she put herself in position to be found. Oh, God, help me. She didn't run after Boaz, but she put herself in position to be found. I need to tease some of my single ladies, but they could get a husband, but you got to come out the house sometime. 
Lord have mercy. I call you. Where you at? You're in the house. I call you the next day. Where you at? I'm in the bed. I call you the next day. Where you out? I'm in the yard. Man, you got to put yourself in position sometime, baby. You got to go somewhere other than just the church and home, baby. <laughs> Jesus. I just said chase after him. I just said put your number on the, on, the, on the windshield, but put yourself in position. Help me, Lord Jesus. Pray for me, Sister Minnie. Pray for me, Sister Minnie. Sister Minnie, this too, is too strong for him today. It's too strong for him today, but put yourself in position. A godly man want him a woman like Queen Esther in the Bible. She submitted to God. She was wise and full of humility. And she was patient, a patient woman. Listen, a godly man, he want a Proverbs 31 woman who is virtuous that will help him rise up in life. Yeah, my wife helped me rise up in life. When I first met her, her credit was way better than mine. She had a car, and I didn't. Her name was better. She came from a great family, but because I hooked up, now my credit score is high, too. Yeah, yeah, now I own some stuff, too. Because uh, I hooked up with a virtuous woman. Yeah, a virtuous woman has strength and dignity. A virtuous woman is business-minded. Yeah. She's good at handling the money. You ain't got to worry about her going to Walmart, spending 2000 all the budget in Walmart. Uh-huh. She, she, she going to pay the bills first That's right. before she go shopping. That's right. She come home with a Gucci purse and the lights cut off. Uh, Y'all laughing, but this happens, don't it? Yeah. A virtuous woman don't do that. A virtuous woman is generous. She looks for opportunities to be a blessing. Yes, amen. She consults her husband out of respect, yes. but she's looking to be a blessing yes. to others. Amen. And so when a man realizes his worth in God, it takes more than hips and breasts to move him. You look good. I saw you. My blood pressure went up a little bit when I saw you, but good. it take more than that to move me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little older now. She, she got to have some royal qualities right. if she's going to get with me. Amen. Come on, say, they got to have royal qualities. Yeah, uh, yeah. Why, why is that, Pastor? Because my heavenly father made me royalty. Yeah. That's why I say it's some kings and queens up in here today. Amen. Now, I want to discuss um, another characteristic of a king and a queen. First uh, Peter 2 and 9, the Bible describes us as being peculiar people. Uh, honey, read uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9, then we're going to bring this thing on home. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a uh -huh. royal priesthood, uh -huh. and holy nation, a peculiar people, mm -hmm. that ye should show forth the praises of him mm -hmm. who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Good God Almighty. Now, this word peculiar does not mean strange. It doesn't mean that you're funny acting. I in the Greek, it literally means that God purchased you and he acquired you as his own special people. Boy, you need to hear that right there. Uh, uh, peculiar means that God purchased you and he acquired you as his own special people. Yeah. And because of that, you are treasured. Yeah. You are greatly valued. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Now, so to all my unmarried people, let me say something to you for quick. I want you to listen to me real quick. When somebody comes along and says they want to date you, you got to let them know up front that my time is precious. Uh, my time is precious. I, therefore, I can't waste time on foolishness. In other words, you got to come correct. I, I can't waste time on foolishness. Listen, my mind got to stay free from all drama and all chaos. If you're bringing drama and chaos, you need to think twice about approaching me. 
Because why? Because my heart is fixed on serving the Lord. And drama and chaos get me off track. When they approach you, say they want to date you, you got to say, listen, my spirit man has to stay in position to hear from the Holy Spirit. And I can't hear from the Holy Spirit if you got me entangled in unrepentant sin. I can't hear from them. We can pretend like that, but when you're in unrepentant sin, your hearing is clogged up. Your joy is messed up. The shame is on you. And I can't hear from God when I'm entangled like that. So with that in mind, are you sure you want to hook up with me? Are you sure? Because if you got gains on your mind, we ain't going to hit it off too well. You tricks off of kids, what the commercial used to say. Tricks off of kids. I already put aside all my childish days, and I ain't trying to go back to being childish. We ain't playing no tricks, so you need to think twice before you try to hook up with me. Another thing, you got to tell them, they say they want to date you. If you got lying and deceiving on your mind, we're not going to hit it off very well. If you got lying and deceiving, you're telling me one thing, but you got two girls over here. You got one in Edgecombe County. You got one in Nash County. You got one guy over here over in, uh, in, in Goldsboro. You got another guy up there in, in, in Kingsboro. We're not going to hit it off too well if you're lying and deceiving. Jesus said in John 8, 44, that the devil is your father if you love the things that he does. Oh, I'm sorry, if you love to do the things that he does. The Bible said he always has hated the truth because there is no truth in him. And, and, and Jesus said when he lies, it is consistent with his character for he, not only is he a liar, but he is the father of lies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen to me carefully. For those of you who are looking to start dating soon, never date anyone who consistently lies and deceives. Why? Because his character is the same as Satan. In other words, Dating a habitual liar and deceiver is like dating Satan himself. Because their characteristics are the same. Come on, say, I don't have time for foolishness. I don't have time for all this lying to see. I got to try to figure out. You say you was in Rocky Mount, but you, I got to try to figure out every day, are you where you said you're going to be? I'm too old for that. Now, for those of you who feel like it's your season to start dating, I don't know why the Lord had me going this way. Uh, um, uh, you feel like it's your season to start dating, ask the person th- these questions. You ask them these questions. You in- interview him. Get your mic f- recorder out or something. And, and make sure he answers the right way or she. Ask him, number one, do you love God even more than you love me? Because that's my first requirement. If you don't love him, boy, it's going to be hard to love me. Because I got a lot of ways. Uh, Miss Doc, I got ways. See, uh, uh, you know, everybody got quirky ways that they go ahead. You got to love God more. Number two, do you know your, what your purpose is? And do you have goals in place to fulfill it? I, I, can't, I can't help you if you don't know where you're going. I, I'm supposed to be, thank you. I'm supposed to be, fo- if it's a female, I'm supposed to be following your lead, but it's hard to follow a parked car. <laughs> the car in neutral, I ain't going nowhere. No Number three, do you understand that if we date, we're not going to be sexually active Amen. till we get married? But pastor, why would anyone say that? Because when you're royalty, no one can enter your bed chamber until a ring is on your finger. 
The bad chamber is not for you yet. This bed chamber is sacred. Now, this thing here is sacred. We don't just jump in and out. Amen. Somebody's thinking, well, Pastor, what is there to do for the unmarried Christian couples other than fornicate? Well, there's a whole lot of stuff you can do. Yes. Let's talk about recreationally first. Yes. You stop, some folks stop having fun, Mr. Jones. Mm -hmm. I love to see your pictures going to Wilmington somewhere. We just stop doing everything. If we're not in a serious relationship, the devil is a liar. Yes, Recreationally, you, 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 some recreational things you can do. Number one, you can, you can go to live plays at the amphitheater in Raleigh. Go see Cats or Lion King or something. Go to the plays. You can work out at the gym mm -hmm. and encourage one another in the weight loss. Woo. Never make fun of somebody's weight unless you're willing to get in there and help them achieve their goals. Yeah. Especially if you're dating. Number three, you can hold one another accountable to see if the other person is praying and studying daily. That's good. That's good. And this one right here is a big one. We don't like to talk about. You can spend time working on yourself. Oh your attitude. Oh. Your bad habits. Your selfish ways, where it's always got to be my way, that does not work in a relationship. It ain't all about one person. You can start working on that now. You can start working on, uh oh, help me, Jesus. You can start working on your parenting skills. Some of y'all ain't whooped your kid. The kid's six years old, they telling you what to do. My wife and I, when we first got married, we were living in Tarboro in Georgetown Apartments. And uh, we heard some noise. I mean, it was Joan at the apartment, and something kept saying, tingling -ling, and glasses were breaking, and plates were breaking. And we went down there to the apartment, and the little boy, he about five years old, he was taking the plates out of the cabinet. He thought them like a frisbee. He was throwing them like frisbee. They were just breaking and breaking the glass. And, and the mama was there crying, oh, I can't do nothing with him. I can't do nothing with him. I started to pull a Steve Harvey and grab him myself, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't do nothing with him. Five years old, you start working on your parenting skills now. Because when you hook up with somebody, you got to blend your family together. And the kid won't listen to you. You know he ain't going to listen to the stepmom or the stepdad. Mm -hmm. Start working on your parenting. You know, there's many children that have broken up relationships, by the way. Yes, yes, <laughs> you yes. can sh listen. You can start working on decreasing your debt load. Yes. Everybody talking about, well, I just want to marry somebody so they can pay all my bills. No, you need to work on decreasing your debt load now. Stop looking for them to pay all your bills off. Stop looking to carry all your bad spending habits yes. over into the next relationship. I know this is practical stuff, but I promise you it'll help you. Start asking God for wisdom on how to stabilize your career. It is not God's will for you to have seven different jobs in one year. <laughs> every year, seven different jobs. You have to ask God, why does every employer that I work for end up firing me? Maybe I have mood swings. Maybe I have a bad temper that I need to work on. Maybe uh, mentally it's something off. But whatever the case, I need to examine myself. Because it's seven jobs. I done got fired in six months. Wow. Do I really want to take that into a relationship? Matter of fact, that's why I keep tearing up relationships with people that I date, my friends and family, my coworkers. Because I ain't took time. To work, come on. I ain't took time to let God work on me. My attitude is bad. And every time I get mad at folks, I, I just cuss them out and leave, and I wonder why I don't have no friends. Another thing you can work on while you both are single, you can ask God about what, what church y'all need to be a part of so you can grow spiritually because neither one of you will act like kings or queens if you don't start growing spiritually. In other words, 
there's a lot of productive things you can do while you're dating other than sinning. Amen. Now, in closing, I want to say this because y'all, y'all, y'all endured me good for a little while. Uh, I got an amens all the way up to I started talking about this part right here, Val. Now, uh, <laughs> the amen went down, boy, when I started about working on your parenting and stuff like that. That need to go on the airwaves, though, because some of y'all kids is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Uh, go in the mall, they tan them. Anyway, uh, in closing, I want to say this. Some of you don't feel like royalty because you missed the mark in some areas. You don't feel like ro- royalty. And every day when you wake up, Satan is good at reminding you of your mistakes. He's good at that. But, beloved, this is what I want to tell you. When Satan reminds you of your past mistakes and your past sins, there's a scripture I want you to meditate on. My wife is going to read it. Honey, read Micah 7, 18, verse 19 in the New Living. Read that for me. This is what you need to meditate on right here. Where is another God like you Mm -hmm. who pardons the guilt of the remnant by mm-hmm. overlooking the sins of his special people. He pardons the sins of the remnant. Go ahead, babe. You will not stay angry with your people forever uh-huh. because you delight in showing unfailing love. God delights in showing you unfailing love after he forgives you. And what do he say after that, babe? Once again, you will have compassion on us. Good God Almighty. You will trample our sins under your feet uh-huh. and throw them into the depths of the sea. Lord, have my listen, listen, listen. Anytime you keep hearing voices that keep reminding you of your past mistakes, just know that is not the Spirit of God, Sister Angela. That's not the Spirit of God. That is an evil spirit sent by the devil. Because once God forgives his remnant, once God forgives his special people that he purchased, he throws your sin into the sea. Some people call it the sea of forgetfulness. And the Bible said in Hebrews 8 and 12 that after God forgives our wickedness, he remembers our sin no more. more. Boy, that's a revelation. You got to get that revelation. He don't even remember it no more. So you keep going to God and say, God, I know but 10 years ago I did this. He said, I don't remember it. But God, but, but, but six months ago, I committed sin. I was in the hotel. I don't remember it. So when Satan whispers those thoughts to you and reminds you of your past sins, tell him that God has forgiven me of my sin and he doesn't remember it anymore. And if people keep bringing it up, if they keep coming into your life, bringing it up, you tell them he doesn't remember it anymore. So why do you keep bringing up my past? If God has thrown it in the sea of forgiveness, why are you bringing it up? If Listen, if he doesn't remember it, why do you keep condemning me? Yeah, because one day God is going to drop the screen. And show you all the mess that you did. And while you're trying to pull the speck out of my eye, you got a big old telegram pole in your eye. I said all that to say, as she said earlier, you got to choose to walk in forgiveness. That God has forgiven you, you got to forgive yourself. You have to choose that. Now, as I get ready to close, bro, Lord, turn the air on for me right quick. Uh, I want to pray for somebody said, uh, Pastor, I had a hard time forgiving myself from stuff in the past. I'm my own hardest critic. I'm my own hardest critic. But I see now that it's under the blood. He said, Pastor, I want you to pray that I will release my own self. I'm not even entangled in the stuff no more, but I need to release my own self. And I need to stop entertaining 
those fiery darts and thoughts that Satan sends to keep reminding me of what I used to do. If that's you, I want you to stand. I'm going to pray really quick, then we're going to go home. I, my thought life is under attack by the old stuff. The, the enemy keep reminding me of the old stuff, and some days it bring me down the old stuff. Glory to God. Father God, right now, I thank you for everyone standing in this room. We all have missed the mark. We all, all of us have sinned at some point and fallen short of the glory of God. But we thank you, Father, that when we came to you and asked for mercy, we asked you to forgive us of our sin you cleansed us you washed us you remove the guilt and the shame and so Lord we thank you that at this point we know who we are in Jesus we know our authority and we will not any longer allow people to keep reminding us of my old past sin in the name of Jesus. I am who you say I am, Lord. And we can do what you say we can do. And we thank you that we're cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus. And you've thrown our sin into the sea of forgetfulness. You don't even remember it. Therefore, we're going to stop hashing over it. We're going to start bringing it up all the time. For we are the redeemed. We've been set free through the blood of Jesus. We've been liberated. And we no longer will allow sin to have dominion over us. The world, the flesh, or the devil will take authority right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that we're moving forward. We receive that grace, that divine enablement grace, that we receive that mercy. We're going to walk in spiritual freedom yes, sir. in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing us of the scars yes. and the wounds of the past. Thank you for healing us of that bitterness yes. when we were treated wrong by our spouse or by our significant other. Yes. Thank you for healing our heart, God. Thank you, God. Yeah, they cheated on me up, but Lord, we forgive. Yes, sir. We release them yes, so we can release ourselves yes, sir. in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you now. Thank you. We're liberated people. Yes, God. We're your own special purchase people. Yes, We're the royalty of God. Kings and queens in the yes, earth. We, we thank you that you've taught us who we are. Thank you, Jesus. And from this day forward, we will walk in it. Yes, God. We'll lean on the grace of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the word of God, our prayer life. But we will walk in it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If he helped you in some way, Lord, have mercy. I'm liberated. I'm liberated to serve him. I've been set free. Glory to God. In my thought life. Glory, glory, I feel your presence. I've been set free. Because I know who I am. I know who I am. Oh, God, I feel that. Somebody was saying, I know who I am now, Pastor. I know who I am. I know my worth. As a man or as a woman, I know my worth. Thank you for teaching me my worth. So I won't settle for less than God's best. There's someone here, you say, Pastor, I never received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. And I want to receive him today. The Bible said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. When you come to the Lord, when you come to the Lord, you come as you are. 
Many years ago in traditional church, people would tell us, well, before you come to the Lord, you got to stop doing this, you got to stop doing that, you got to stop doing that. No, you come to the Lord as you are. And when you give your life to Him, and the Holy Spirit comes abode in you, He'll help you with every evil tendency, every bad habit, every addiction. If you surrender, He will help you with it. If we could do it apart from the Lord, He would have never had to go to Calvary's cross to start with. Come to him as you are. He said, Pastor, I want to commit my life to the Lord today. If that's you, I want you to come up here. And my wife and I are going to pray with you, and she's going to take you in the back. Pray. I, I want to give my life to the Lord. I'm tired of I'm tired of being religious, tired of playing games. I want to give my life to the Lord. So he said, Pastor, I gave my life to the Lord years ago, but I got away from the things of God. Although I haven't lost my salvation, but I feel defeated. I feel backslidden. I don't have that peace or joy like I used to have. And I want to rededicate myself. I want to reconsecrate myself. The Bible said in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you every sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, you missed it, but it's time to get back up and start moving forward. Pastor, I want to rededicate dedicate my life. I need that assurance today. If that's you, I want you to come up here. I need that assurance, Pastor. I need somebody to pray with me. Well, you said, Pastor, I don't have a church home. I don't have a place where I can come and worship and be up under a spiritual covering. Although this building is not the church, but I want to hook up with this body of believers that assemble here at this place called Spirit of Truth. I want to go through the new members class, receive the right hand of fellowship, and I want to be a part of this local fellowship and sit up under the tutelage of you and Dr. Cynthia so that I can grow thereby. If that's you, if I want to be a part of this ministry, you can stand right where you are and co come forward either one of those three calls. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. If there's no one to respond to the altar call, then we're going to get ready to receive our offering. Amen. I mean, oh, God loves a cheerful giver, a prompt to do it, hilarious giver whose heart is in his giving. Those of you who desire to participate in the offering, lift your hands up, um, uh, my people are moving now to hand you an offering envelope. Um, if you're a first-time visitor, uh, I want you to, they're going to give you a visitor's card that you can fill out and the information that we get from that so that we can make you aware of upcoming events. And uh, y'all can give me some music back there, if you don't mind, for the offering. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the right one right there. Who's that gal right there? <laughs> oh, yeah, the cash app, for those of you who use electronic giving, the cash app is dollar symbol STCC overflow. And they give a www.givelify.com and look for Spirit of Truth and you'll see this podium right here let me stand at the podium
Our June birthdays is Vanessa Hines, Charlie Pippen on June 18th. I want to say happy birthday to both of you all. Amen. Father, we thank you for that very liberal giving. We stand in agreement with your people for the corresponding return in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sister Bennett.